Hey, I'm Rory. And I'm Rai. And, and we're, we're the, the Black, Black Sox. First and foremost, why do you even like wine? Alright, so wine things. Wine 101. Wine things. <laughs> <laughs> so my love affair started with wine when I started to work for one of the biggest independent wine retailers in the country and I got exposed to thousands and thousands of different bottles of wine and what intrigued me was just how unique each bottle was and the authentic story that every bottle of wine tells. Okay. Ditto, actually. I love wine because if you look at a wine bottle, if you turn it over, it has a good story on it. I love storytelling, I love movies, and you associate it with kind of like that social factor. Mm -hmm. When you open a bottle of wine, people sit around, people start telling stories, and it just, it just flows naturally for me to love wine. Uh, I think the taste of it also kind of helps. <laughs> and I, I, would, I would say the feeling after too because um, there's tequila drunk, there's henny drunk, and then there's wine drunk. Ooh, and then there's champagne brunch drunk. Yeah, and I think... Whole different level. Wine drunk <laughs> is absolutely my favorite because it's just like, I'm a little bit more reckless. Okay, we can get into that. <laughs> <laughs> but first, uh, as I said, we're going to be this discussing Wine 101. Wine and things. Wine things. <laughs> Wine 101, so we're going to go through our five S's, which we mentioned in a previous episode, but we're just going to go a little bit deeper and just show you how to go through those five S's. Maybe not with every single glass that you that you open, uh, but just, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but we're going to get through some things. All right, so five S's is your first step into getting there. And so, what is that first S? So the first S is you see the wine. Well, hold on, first I got to pour the wine first. That would be helpful. <laughs> here, let me pour you right here. Ooh, let me take care of you. But to see the wine, why are we looking at the wine? My number one reason to look at wine uh, is to know what you're drinking, number one. Not just if it's a white wine or a red wine. Uh, but let's see, with white wine, if you look into the glass, if it is a dark, darker color, like yeah. a darker brown color, that is an older wine. And if you're drinking something like Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc, even your Moscatos, you kind of want to drink those young and mm -hmm. not so old. So if it's a dark color, that's an old wine. You probably want to stay away with it. Yeah, so the first thing you do is you see the wine and you look at it just to see if it's good in because you want to see if there's any sediment in there. See, it's like you literally, you eat with your eyes first, so you taste with your eyes first, right? Yes. So you look at the wine to kind of see what your expectations are for the wine. Yeah. See if it's good. So usually what you do is you place the wine behind a white background or you can just slightly tilt your gas and just take a look. <laughs> you white now? Um, sometimes. <laughs> Let me grab you some paper. <laughs> there you All go. Alright, there you go. So you literally go behind a white background and then you can look at the color of the wine, right? Okay. Then, the next thing you do is you swirl the glass. Well, right? you know what I should mention? I did mention that white wine turns uh, darker when mm. it gets older, as opposed to your red wine, which gets lighter. So you could also determine the age of your wine simply by looking at the color. That's an important factor when you're looking at your wine. You uh, so yes, next step. Alright, so you swirl the wine. And why do we swirl the wine? Well, this bottle of wine, as with all bottles of wine, are in barrels for maybe a couple of years. Then mm -hmm. it goes into a bottle. So pretty much everything is trapped in there. All the esters are trapped in there. The mm -hmm. alcohol is trapped in there. So as soon as you pour the bottle, you don't want to just immediately sip it. Mm -hmm. If it's a red wine, let's say about 12.5 or higher percent alcohol, that's all you're going to get. You're just going to get that alcohol on the nose mm -hmm. as opposed to all the fruit flavors that we're really looking for and you know trying to taste. So we release, the oxygen gets in there and actually gives life to the wine. Ooh. Yeah, you like brings that? It brings it up. Brings life. Mm. Yes, we give life. All right, then. So it brings life to the wine. It actually releases the aromas and it actually um, sets you up for your next step, which is to... Well, you know what? Before we even get into our next step, mm -hmm. swirling, because a lot can be told uh, by swirling. Ooh, yeah. Um, I don't know if we can get in on this now. No. Probably not. But once you swirl the wine... And then you see those little legs, as we call them, yeah. running down. Mm -hmm. You can actually tell the amount of alcohol in your wine. If the legs are far apart and take a very long time to roll down your glass, mm -hmm. that's an elevated alcohol percentage. Mm -hmm. And that's the type of things I definitely look for when I'm drinking my wine. There if they run down very quickly, um, lighter alcohol yeah. uh, type of wine. And also the viscosity of the wine or the weight to the wine is different. It a little bit be, lighter body, as they like to exactly. say. Exactly. Is mm -hmm. it heavy cream or is it more of, you know, just a little... Oh, All right, then we take a sniff. Oh, yeah. I'm skipping them already. <laughs> I just want to drink don't some be, wine. Don't be thirsty. Mm. So then you look for the aromas. And then when people smell wine, they often say, oh, I get nice aromas of peach, um, citrus, uh, green apple. Um, what you do is you relate the wines to things that you smell in your everyday life. Right? Yeah, well that, and then also with the breakdown of wine, this is all organic compounds, correct? Mm -hmm. So the same things that we get from those fruit, the same aromas that we get from those fruit, the same compounds rather, are found in the grapes that are used to make our wine. 
So that's why we can say, oh, this white wine tastes like nectarine, it tastes like peaches, it tastes like a little bit of lime, because they share a common organic compound in those fruits and in the grape itself. Nice. So we smell to see if what we um, are going to taste. Like going to expectation taste. for taste. Expectation for yeah. tasting. There and then go. you go ahead and take a sip. Finally. Does it taste like what it smells like? So I actually smell peaches when I take a little sniff there. Mm -hmm. And it actually tastes like peaches, yeah. All right. Mm. So excellent winemaking. Just mm -hmm. that winemaker. Yes, I will. Um, <laughs> and then the last S is usually either spit or swallow. Savor. Savor. Yeah, that those are our technical word terms. <laughs> yeah, but I like spit or swallow. So are you a spitter or are you a swallower? I, it depends on the day, you know? Sometimes, well, what if I don't like the wine? I might want to spit it out. No offense to the winemaker, but there are some wines. So maybe it's a bad wine. Mm -hmm. Maybe I saw it, but, you know, it didn't really give any color decoration or anything like that. Maybe I smelled it, but it didn't really smell like anything was wrong with it. But then when I tasted it, it wasn't there's something wrong with yeah. this wine. So, yeah, I may have to spit it out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would definitely savor. Mm -hmm. But then, that pretty much wraps up everything. All right. But now that we know how to taste our wine, uh, let's see, you want to get into maybe how to open a bottle? All right, so simple, simple, simple things here. So it doesn't matter the wine key that you use, whether you spent $10. Yes, it does. <laughs> I am a fan of the double hinge wine key. Yeah. This is super easy. I think all the servers have it. Yeah. It just works out perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then we have that one, which is And then we have common. the winged. You can find Which, that in the dollar store all yeah. over the place. And I, I, I typically like these because it's like, it's dummy proof. Oh yeah, and it lasts long anyway. Yeah. It lasts a very long time. All right then, so you want to go ahead and show us how to open the bottle of wine? Yes, mm. let's do this. So we always have this little knife part here. Mm -hmm. And you want to cut below the lip. Right. There's two lips on glass, you want to cut below. Why? To avoid getting any foil into your wine. Because okay. that will definitely taste the taste. Not to mention probably ruin your throat or something. All right, so let's get this off of here. Let's see if I can get this off without issue. I guess not. Need help? I think I got it. I think I can. I think I can. I'm usually a lot smoother than this, but. No, that's all right. All right, put that away so we don't get any damages to this beautiful brown skin. Mm. Okay. Corkscrew. I usually like to tilt the bottle and get it in there. Nice and straight, not on an angle. Oh, that sound is terrible. Ooh, ooh. This is where my double hinge come in. Hinge one on the lip of the bottle. Hinge two. There we go. Look at that. Nice, smooth, easy. Nice. Mm. So I see you sniff the cork. Why do you sniff the cork? I sniff the cork, number one. It's kind of like my five S's, but oh, just okay. a little bit before. I smell it to see if there's any, you can smell when a wine is bad. It's called cork taint. Mm -hmm. uh, that happens when they're like, because uh, you know, it's porous, mm -hmm. it's holy. So sometimes oxygen can get into the wine and ruin it before we even get a chance to, to try it. Okay. So that's an immediately, uh, immediate indicator if your wine is good or not. Okay. It's, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> but besides that, now that we've opened it, let's say we don't want to drink it all. I don't know if that ever happens to you, but because <laughs> I usually drink it all. But now we need to store it. What is this? So this is the, what? I guess it's, it's we just gonna call it a wine saver. <laughs> Pop it in there. <laughs> yeah, so these are wine savers. Um, you can get them at any one of your wine retailers. As you said, oxygen sometimes is bad for wine. Yes. And what this does is it gives you an extra couple of days for your bottle of wine. So if you're not an alky and don't drink it all in one sitting, like our lovely friend right here, you I'm can actually, <laughs> you can actually use this to save the wine um, for a couple extra days. So what it actually does is it removes the air and puts an air seal tight with that so here just go ahead and give it a pump Ooh. so once you usually hear that click it means that the bottle is sealed airtight and then look there Ooh, you're full of my wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that actually gives you a couple extra days of storage of the wine before it goes bad in your fridge speaking of storing wine uh let's see we have a bottle of white and a bottle of red how mm -hmm. do we store this because i noticed that this white is chilled so yeah. we got it out of the fridge exactly so you usually start you can store your reds or your white in the fridge if you don't have a wine refrigerator okay so perfectly fine to store them in the fridge um usually even recommended serving temperatures what i usually do is um for my white wines i take them out of the fridge five to seven minutes before i'm going to drink it because you're precise. Wanting, you want it to be cold <laughs> but not too cold because when a wine is too cold you can't really taste it 
Got it. And then Red One is recommended to have a room temperature, but we live in Florida, which is There's no very hot. So a room temperature for us <laughs> is a lot different. So I recommend putting your red wines in the fridge five to ten minutes before you're going to drink it. That makes sense to me. Right. Or if you have a wine cooler, you can just store it in there. I think they usually have different settings. For yeah, and you can adjust cold. the temperature gauges. Exactly. But yes, your red wine should be chilled. Not cold, but chilled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So everyone's on their wine journey. And we hope you can start today. And I hope we can take you with us.